The UN Special Envoy for Syria is warning of what he calls a perfect storm in Idlib province if the government pushes to retake the last rebel stronghold. Staffan de Mistura is calling for a humanitarian corridor to free three million people trapped there. The Syrian government, backed by its ally Russia, is vowing to go all the way after groups they consider to be terrorists. Rory Challens reports from Moscow. The question of if there'll be an assault on Idlib has faded recently. Now it's more a matter of when. That shift has been hastened by hardening language coming out of Moscow. It was with satisfaction that we noted the majority of the Syrian Arab Republic is now freed of terrorists. What we need now is to wipe out those terrorist groups which persist, particularly in the de-escalation zone in Idlib. Sergei Lavrov was meeting his Syrian counterpart Walid al-Mawalam in the Russian capital. Mawalam said they'd finish the groups they call terrorists, but also try to protect civilians. The decision of the Syrian leadership is to fight al Nusra front, whatever the sacrifices are. We are ready to exert every possible effort not to harm civilians. But civilians have paid a heavy price in previous Russian-backed Syrian government pushes to recapture rebel areas, the sieges and bombardments of Aleppo, Ghouta and Daraa. <laughs> Turkey is urging Russia to take more care to avoid a humanitarian catastrophe. Ankara wants extra time to persuade any armed groups in Idlib open to a deal, something the UN special envoy to Syria also advocates. One avenue would be to, one, not accelerate military escalation and give a little bit more time for this type of discussion. Two, allow and facilitate a credible, credible humanitarian corridor to allow civilian population to temporarily evacuate to a safer area Moscow says it'll consider de Mistura's humanitarian corridor suggestion and it needs to show it's listening to Turkey. If Moscow decides to push for massive uh, offensive on Idlib uh, that will produce another huge wave of uh, Syrian refugees, maybe hundreds of thousands, uh, fleeing to, uh, to Turkey, which, uh, which is counter to Russia's uh, interests and uh, Russian priorities there, and also uh, that's a scenario which is not very uh, affordable for Turkey as well. Idlib is the largest remaining rebel stronghold. If the Syrian government takes it, Damascus will claim the war is effectively over and that is won. But there are an estimated 3 million people trapped there, 10,000 of which the UN estimates to be Nusra or Al-Qaeda linked fighters. And the severity of the onslaught that they all receive depends largely on how much force the Russian and Syrian militaries are willing to use. Rory Challens, Al Jazeera, Moscow. Well, here's what's at stake in Idlib province, the last major rebel enclave in Syria. Russia has called it a hotbed of terrorists. UN envoy Staffan de Mistura believes that 10,000 Al-Qaeda-linked fighters are there. It's home to close to 3 million people, almost half of them displaced from territory that the government has captured, including Aleppo, eastern Ghouta and Daria province. NATO has reported a Russian naval build-up in the Mediterranean Sea, where Russia is holding exercises from this Saturday. Nada Hashemi is the director of the Center for Middle East Studies at the University of Denver and the author of The Syria Dilemma. He joins us now uh, via Skype. The UN uh, seems pretty powerless here. Russia and uh, the Syrian government, they more or less have free reign to do what they want in Idlib, don't they? That's correct. Um, uh, many years ago, um, the international community, um, led by the United States, effectively abandoned any interest in Syria and turned over the country effectively to, to Russia and Iran um, to sustain uh, the Assad regime. Um, the big, I think, unknown here is what will Turkey do? Turkey has stated that Idlib is a red line. We don't know uh, how red that line will be um, and whether Turkey is prepared to do anything to stop this impending um, offensive. So I think that's really um, something to watch for. OK, so so Turkey, uh, to a certain extent, is, is the key player here. It's, it's not Russia. It's not Syria or Iran. Uh, it is Turkey. 
Well, Turkey is the key player um, in one sense. Um, um, and so right now there is an intensive, um, you know, Turkish-Russian um, dialogue going on to try and defuse this crisis. Um, Russia seems to be determined to conquer Idlib uh, along with Iran and the Assad regime in the exact same way that they did in Aleppo two and a half years ago and earlier this year in um, East Huta and in Dara um, over um, the past summer. So I think the, the, the key sort of players here uh, to watch is really Turkey on the one side that effectively um, has claimed jurisdiction and is backing certain rebel groups within Idlib, while Russia on the other side seems determined to carry on with this offensive. So if Idlib turns into another Eastern Ghouta, the, the, the primary concern here, of course, is for the three million people living there. How credible is Stefan de Mistura's offer to, to, to go there and to create a humanitarian corridor so that people can move to safety? It makes no sense to me at all. Um, the question is, where are they going to go? They're certainly not, to, not going to go into Syrian government regime territory. They've all fled from there, and they are opponents of the Assad regime. And Turkey is the only place they can go. There's a long border between Idlib province and Turkey. But Turkey has explicitly say, stated that they have maxed themselves out in terms of hosting refugees. There's 3.5 million Syrian refugees in Turkey already. Turkey has said it will not open its border. So I don't know what Stefan Dimastur is talking about. Um, and I think it really um, uh, does not help when he sort of advances arguments about a humanitarian corridor that simply make no factual or, or sort of political sense. And what of the rebels? Uh, they've lost the war. What happens to them now? Well, it depends on what rebels you're talking about. Uh, in Idlib, it's a very complex picture of multiple rebel groups. Of course, the dominant rebel groups are the extremist uh, Al-Qaeda faction um, that is there. They have no, uh, none of the rebel groups have any sort of significant international backing or regional backing. Militarily, they are far weaker than the, uh, the Assad regime and its Iranian and Russian backers. So there's no way that they can really, I think, withstand a, um, a military onslaught um, that Russia seems to be organizing. The one unknown, however, are these rumors that if diplomacy doesn't work between Russia and Turkey, perhaps Turkey might try to organize and mobilize some of the more moderate rebel forces within Idlib that are not affiliated with um, 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 Al-Qaeda and to stage some sort of resistance and to try and prevent the onslaught from taking place. And that remains to be seen. One final question. What do you make of, of this uh, Russia announcement? I mean, it's not just an announcement. Now we've, we've seen ships going through the, the Bosphorus of, 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 um, of, of, of military drills taking place in the Mediterranean Sea this weekend. Well, it's a show of, uh, you know, power. It's, it's muscle flexing. It's precisely, I think, really what is at the heart of Russia's interest in Syria to demonstrate to the world that it's a global power on the rise that it can deploy its um, navy, in this case, anywhere it wants in the world. I think it's also trying to send a message to the Americans uh, not to think about intervening in any way, not that the United States has any interest in Idlib or in Syria anymore. But I think it's really a demonstration um, of Russian sort of uh, military prowess uh, to the world, to regional powers, and to the, to the West itself, that Russia now is, you know, um, in the driver's seat and can do whatever it wants, um, in this case, uh, in, in the context of Syria, but really with an eye to other parts of the world where Russia has deep interests. Good to talk to you so many. Thanks indeed. Nada Hashmi there, the director of the Center for Middle East Studies at the University of Denver.